welcome back to the hyperbolic coating chamber okay we are back once again i got my best grandpa ever drip on so you're going to want to go to best to hyperbolic coating chamber.com slash best grandpa ever to get this merch uh the merch site is not true or real and we're on a bit of a different setup today it's not gonna look that different to you guys i think but using the mac today so things are gonna look a little strange so yesterday's video was yesterday's video was sponsored by Prison Break. Today's video is sponsored by Dihydrogen Monoxide, so you're going to want to make sure to get your water every day that you need it. Also, it is pretty late, late schedule today, and things just got a little crazy. And it is to say that the schedule just requires, it's the schedule's tight. So I stayed up a little too late last night, so when I woke up a little too late, I was slept in today. I didn't have as much time before work, which meant that I could only choose one thing. I chose rowing, so I chose to row, which was a great way to wake up. However, I ended up pushing leak code back, which meant I didn't get a chance to focus for that day, which also meant that things just weren't as good. So it was harder to stay focused throughout the day. And also, the stress of the, it getting later and later in the day and me getting tired and more tired, I hadn't done it yet. So it's always easier for it to be the first thing. That being said, I put more things into place. I installed cold turkey blocker, which should block everything after a certain amount of time. So all apps, Chrome, it's mostly, there's no apps really, it's just websites. So pretty much every social media site you can think of is blocked. And I almost made that mistake because I just realized I almost was not able to upload this to YouTube. But everything should be blocked after a certain amount of time, which should prevent me from staying up too late and messing all this up. So hopefully that'll fix that. And then, yeah, I'm realizing, worst case scenario, oh, worst case scenario, if the schedule gets messed up, I need a backup plan. So worst case scenario, I gotta delete code. So, bit late video today, but we're gonna start anyway. We're gonna do a little bit of a shorter session, just cause things have been a little bit crazy. I'm also realizing I might be stretching myself too thin before I've activated all of my Nen. So Hunter X Hunter watchers will know that we need a greater pool to draw our Nen, our Nen charge from. So yeah, maybe stretching ourselves a little too thin. I noticed today I was very, very like, my brain is just fried. So I think the lack of sleep, so we do the lack of, there's low lack of sleep, doing a lot at work, hour of lead code, the whole thing is, takes up a lot of energy. And I do some high intensity exercise and then I'll do some working on the application I'm working on in my free time. It's just a lot. <laughs> it might not be a lot for some people, but I don't, I'm not very good at staying focused. So it has been a lot for myself. That being the case, many things are challenging, but the question remains to be seen if the challenge is worth, if the reward is worth the challenge. And I think it is. But that being said, we have some comments today that I am going to go through. So let's see. And we have a comment from Raphael Dietrich who says that today's video is sponsored by Prison Break. True. That is true. Prison Break is a legendary show, so you're going to want to <laughs> make sure to check that out. And we have you see your man, you're saying, how can you only be so clean? That's unfair. You should make the lead. It would be cool to make a living make ans do answering lead code questions. It would be epic. It would be epic. W human. You see her? You're up next. You're up next, dude. So, yeah, this man is up next. Potato plus, plus never forget about the road across Atlantic. Facts. This is actually going to happen. So, on day 1,000, or day 600, I forgot what day I said, but on day 600, no, on day 1,000, we're all going to row across the Atlantic. So, hey, you're going to want to be there when we do that. Or you might want to be on the shore watching us do that because it might actually be safer that way. But true. Also, shout out Botea Public, legendary human. At growth, yeah, it's been pretty cool, man, to see the uh, the growth. It's, yeah, so it's just interesting to see. I didn't think uh, we would get... 10 subscribers so the fact that we've been able to get like 
almost at 600 is pretty crazy. Crazy times, man. Crazy times to be alive. Rowing is better than caffeine. You are better than caffeine. Part. True. Rowing is flames. This exercise, also, you're going to be seeing a lot of clickbait. There's a lot of clickbait <laughs> recently. So I'm going to be saying, <laughs> on the sum of the video, <laughs> on day 121, I said, this one exercise will change your life. Okay? So there's going to be a lot of clickbait to come. This video's clickbait is going to be called, uh, it's going to be something very ominous. And uh, clickbait is dastardly evil and vile. But I see why people do it now. It is a necessary evil. So this video's clickbait is going to be cre pretty crazy. Thank you for your patience in advance, gang. So appreciate it, gangies. And yeah, we're not going to do a crazy amount of time today. We're just going to do 30 minutes. And I said the lowest I would ever do, worst case scenario, is 15 minutes because that's what we started with. But I, don't, I still don't think it's a 15-minute day. I still don't think it's a 15 minute day. So we're still gonna do 30 minutes and we'll just kind of see how it goes. And yeah, that's why everything is not really set up, but we're just gonna jump into it. Uh, as you guys know, we're basically doing easies pretty much all the time now. And maybe it's, oh, this is actually a medium. I actually wouldn't mind doing some mediums, but I think easies are the way. I think I might be low key be a completionist and it would just be cool to see all them locked in. We have some questions here. Valid words where number of segments, ranging coins. And we're just going to see if we can just keep moving forward. So maybe we know we should have did. We should have maybe sorted it by frequency then by ease. I don't think you can actually do that in lead code. What if we said difficulty easy, highest frequency? Ooh, this might be the wave actually. If we went highest frequency first, we might actually learn a lot more. So maybe that is what we'll do. So we'll just go from highest frequency, we have big countries. Fibonacci number. Oh, a transpose matrix sounds difficult. Just from the jump, it sounds difficult. So we're just going to jump into it. And we have 30 minutes. So I'm just going to start that and we're just going to jump into it. So, and I said we'd try to start using C++, but uh, I actually don't know how we're going to make that make sense long term. But, uh, yeah, there's just a lot we don't know how to make work with C++, but I actually am pretty cool with TypeScript. So let's just do that one for this one. So given an array of integers R, return true if the number of occurrences of each value in the array is unique or false otherwise. So given an array of integers R, return true if the number of occurrences of each value in the array is unique. For example, if one, two, two, one, one, three, we want to return true because the number of occurrences of each value in the array is unique. Okay. So we have one appears three times, two appears two times, and one appears, I mean, three appears one time. Three is one, and then one, two, Okay, I think we could make this work in the constraints that the array length is goes up to a thousand. This is uh, R sub i's values value between negative a thousand and a thousand. I think we could just use two maps for this. First map would simply map number to occurrences. My vim bindings aren't working at all. I think we could just use two maps for this. Actually, I don't know if we need two maps. Yeah, we can just use one. We can use a map plus a set, actually. So we'll map the number to the occurrence, and then we'll iterate through the array again, right? And if we iterate through the array, we'll add its occurrences to the set, and if it already exists in the set, we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll return 
true. So we can actually do that now. And I actually can't see my timer. So we'll create the map to start. There'll be a new map that maps a number to a number. It's going to start empty. And then we'll iterate through const num of r. And we'll say const actually let value right equal if map already has an occurrence right for this number we want to do is do map dot get num which should return a number otherwise we'll set it to zero what we'll do is we'll set map we'll map the number right to the value of plus one and it actually is called num and then we'll have a set which should just be a new set of numbers which we'll just call occurrences and we should be able to do for num of r and then we'll say if set dot has map dot get num right we want to return false otherwise we just want to say set dot add map dot get num I want to just run this to see if it works for the dopamine hit. I believe it should. And we were wrong about that. So we return false. I thought it has. Let's see, set dot has map dot get the occurrence you return false because they're not unique. Otherwise, we add. So I wonder what the problem is here. Actually, it's not of R. I actually don't understand what the problem is here. My brain is actually fried. Map dot has map dot get. You iterate for the through the numbers. Oh, I see what's going on. Iterating through the numbers of the array, which can have multiple of the number. What we should have done was iterate through the keys of the map. And I think if we had slowed down, we would have caught that. We iterate through the keys of the map. Actually, not even that. It actually is much simpler if we just iterate through the values of the map. So we just say map dot values, and we'll just call it num still. I'll put false here. They're expecting true. Three, two, one. Oh, right, we have to remove num, because num would now be the occurrences, which is, you don't have to get that. Definitely don't think we should have spent that much time on this problem, but iterate through the array once. Worst case, some of our occurrences. It seems like this would might be linear time and linear space. Linear time because we iterate through the array. Worst case, the values could also be the length of the array. 
And then we also use a map and a set, which would be bounded by the number of keys, which could also be entirely unique, I guess, which might be in the year space. But let me see. I wonder if there's a constant space. Solution. I can't, I wonder, yeah, I'm not seeing an obvious one. You know, I don't think there's a ton of value to extract from this, so we'll keep moving. This is big countries. This is SQL. I don't know how to use that. Or not directly, I'm used to ORM stuff. Given two neg two, given two non-negative Integers low and high return the count of odd numbers between low and high inclusive. Okay, low is three, which is odd, and high is also odd. We want to return the count of odd numbers. Okay. This one seems a little too straightforward. I'm also getting no syntax highlighting on Ruby. So I'm just gonna say low up to and including. Low up to and including high each do num and ct equals zero Turn CT and we'll say CT plus equal one if low mod two does not equal zero. So if we're given three, right, let's start at three, we'll say does three mod two not equal zero? Yes, so we add one, go to four. Uh, mod two would give you zero, go to five. Mod two would not give you zero. We go to six, it would give you zero. We go to seven, it would not give you zero. We would turn three. My output, oh. My output was five. Oh. that definitely making some silly mistakes I think oh and linear time is unacceptable interesting so this might actually be harder I wonder what the dislike ratio is it's not actually too bad hmm the number of odd numbers in a range. Number of odd numbers in a range is crazy. Number of odd numbers in a range. Besides linear time solution, This one scales linearly. Linear time is too slow. We need something faster. We need something faster. Linear time is too slow.
You know, I'd be curious to know if you can also just do num and one. I wonder if that all, I'd, I'd probably, I'm just curious if that also gives you the right answer. How does that num masked with a one? Bitwise and I feel like this should still work. Don't understand. I don't understand. I feel like if we mask a number with one, I think something is awry. So plus equal one. I feel like if you mask it and one, so we can see that we're only printing one three times. Oh, maybe I need to do something like literally say equals one. I see. This might be fast enough. Oh, still not fast enough. That's interesting. Well, this one we already started an odd number. So what if we just added two? Instead of doing each number, say while num is greater than or equal to low and num is less than or equal to high, we'll say num equals low to start say low plus equal to
Not low, but numb. Yeah, then you end up skipping numbers. What we can do is say low equals low minus equal one if low mod two equals zero. Or we can move it forward one. Jeez, it's still too slow. A lot of operations. I mean, what we're doing here is not even, it's not gonna even gonna change in, in an order of magnitude sort of way. So what are we doing here? Num ampersand. Assuming every assuming every other number is odd, for example, given the range three to seven, the numbers here are three, four, five, six, and seven, which means we'd have one, two, three. If we did seven minus three, we'd get four. If it was eight, we still get four. If it was two, we still get four. No, if it was two, we do seven minus two, we get five. So what if we did six minus, so what I'm thinking is maybe there's a, a way that we can just calculate the number of odd numbers if we assume that every other number is odd. So what if they're both non-odd, we just go, we'll just add one to it, we'll go to four, to six, did four, six minus four, we get two over one would be one. Well, six minus four give you two. You divide it by two and you get one. And you could add the ends inclusive. So what if we had something like eight and 10? Eight and 10, they're already odd. So we do 10 minus eight, which gives, I mean, they're already even. So we do 10 minus eight and we get two divided by Two, we get one. So maybe this could work. Let's try with something crazy. If we had a test case, for example, something like zero up to 100. 0 and 100, we want it so that both the low, or we actually ignore the low and the high. So we'd add one to it and we'd say 1, 99. We say 99 minus 1 would give us 98. 
and then 98 divided by 2 would give us 49. Okay. So what if we just return z 0 and see, just to see what the result is for this case. And let's see if it's 49. It's 50. I guess the question is, is zero mod two, if we change this test case, test case three to one. Change this test case to one, we still get 50. It doesn't seem to be much of a, basically every other number is odd. Three going to seven, we have Odd, even, odd, even, odd. So we just did something like if low mod two does not equal zero and high mod two does not equal zero. We return high minus low. Minus one. Then we could say if low mod two doesn't equal zero. Now, let's say low is even. If low is even, then we have even, odd, even. If we move 10 minus A, we get 2. We still subtract 1. Now, what if high is... Odd. We have low equals 8. And high equals nine, nine minus eight gives you one. This is, this is a Hail Mary. basically the same thing either way, except for this one. Kind of 
breaks the case here. I have an else if right low equals zero, we can just return high over two. And this assumes that high is always even, but we could do high over two minus one. Definitely not my strongest ideas here. Yeah, I can't see this one. I should have looked at the hint. The range high minus low plus one is even. Number of even odd numbers in this range would be the same. Yeah, we'll have to come back to this one tomorrow with fresh brain sauce, but we're going to wrap it up there.